are ready now for the last argument. The state gets to make their uh, final closing argument as rebuttal. So generally, they begin the rebuttal argument. Ladies and gentlemen, this case isn't about England. It's not about barristers. It's not about the guilty plea. It's about December 17, 2015 in Alonzo. It's not about creating a case, it's about the real life event that these kids had to suffer through that night. I want you to picture it. You've got Devontae Patrick, this high school student, who was planning on hooking up with his friends, playing video games. You've got Latasha Colbert, a mom, who was sitting at home watching YouTube on her phone. You've got her two kids in the next room coming up with a plan how they can stay up a little bit later. And you got a bunch of teenagers on the back porch, just hanging out, laughing. Talking about the game. And you can imagine how their voices are permeating through the cold night air. And what they don't realize is right down the street at the park, which is right down from the school, eight folks. <coughs> get with Colbert, Williams, Brandon Perry, and four other friends are walking down the street. And they're walking and they're thinking. Their guns in their pocket. They're dressed in black. And they're walking. And every step that they are taking, they're thinking. And they're walking towards their targets. And these kids have no clue. These kids, they, they, they have, they're just, they're kids. It's the end of the school year. So you can imagine the plans that they're coming up with. To do nothing. Eat, sleep, play video games, hang out. That's what they're going to do. And as the aid of these people are walking towards Lonsdale, Devontae is waiting on his buddy to pick him up, and he sees this group. And it's because of where Devontae grew up. Devontae, he, he doesn't have a degree. He hadn't even graduated high school. But because of where he grew up, he knows enough to know they're gang members. How does he know that? Because he's lived there. He's lived there. He knows. <laughs> Something ain't right. And I tried to get him to describe how they were walking, how he knew this. You can't put it in words. It's just something that he knew. It's something he's lived. And to corroborate that fact, when Mr. Colbert approaches him and says, what's griping, what's banging, that language is language of the bloods. And I, I don't gang bang. I, I don't know. And this young man, Devante, this tall young man who moments earlier was thinking about hanging out playing video games with his buddies, has now become this <laughs> terrified kid who is running in the house trying to convince his grandmama to go upstairs. This case is about Lonsdale. And while he is, is concerned about his, not only his safety, not really his, it's his grandmama's safety. Grandmama, you've got to go upstairs. You've got to go upstairs. And if she's not believing him, she's not listening to him, it takes him a while to convince her first to listen to him. I mean, you can imagine, she's a grandma. I'm not going to listen to you, kid. You know, I'm the, I'm the adult here. I'm the, I, I'm the one who's in charge. And he's trying to explain to her how times have changed. <coughs> Something just ain't quite right. I've looked outside. I've lived in Lonsdale my whole life, and I've seen eight people that I don't know. They're not dressed the way folks in Lonsdale dress. I'm telling you, they're gang members. Ain't nothing good going to happen. And he's finally able to get his grandmama to safety. And so then the next thing he is thinking about is protecting his friends. And these eight people, they're still walking. And the kids on the porch, they're still laughing. 
And Latasha's still watching. And Jayla and Deshaun, they're still playing. And I stay up a little bit longer. So I almost had a drink. And they're walking down the stairs. And the group of eight, Bloods, walking down the street. And they're all lined up. And Louis, again, that Louis corroborates Devante. It's it's just the knowledge that you have from growing up in the neighborhood. You just you know, you know when people aren't supposed to be in your neighborhood. You know that. And it's it's so unfortunate, ladies. That is that that's what we've come to. Gangs are so powerful. Whether you're officially, whether you're an associate, it's, it's the point, it's just that power that you have. It's the terror that you put in the hearts of people who ain't got nothing to do with that gang life. Because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't want to be killed for no reason. And so when Louis, the jokester of the, of the bunch, is there on the porch and he happens to look up and he, he sees the same thing that Devante sees. It's a group of people that don't belong here. Something ain't right. We need to go. It's that fear. At that point in time, those eight people, they had accomplished. If your mission was to set out and scare a bunch of people, to intimidate them, to show them that you're tough, you won. You've scared these kids. They're running. But that wasn't just a mission. It wasn't just to scare kids. And as they began running, the group of them began firing. And for each pull of the trigger, each of them is responsible for every single pull of that trigger, all 34 times at least. Bullets whizzing by people's heads. Hitting near them there on the porch. <clears throat> Striking Xavier. And when the eight of them turn to leave to walk out of Lonsdale, they've still left those kids in terror. Xavion's dead. The other young men, they're terrified. They then hop fences. You've got these teenagers crying, calling for their moms. They go back and get in their cars and continue on about their evening. Until somebody else pulls out a gun and shoots Brandon Perry and their response, of course, would be to hop out and chase them down and start shooting. Now how do we identify the, uh, the group that goes over to Lonsdale? Hey, we ain't going to shy away from it. We're relying on Larry North. Absolutely. And I want you to think about it. I, I know we've been in a lot of exhibits. And there's probably, when we were playing that video of um, Officer Malone, and it's no audio. And it was just the video showing uh, Larry North shaking an officer. Y'all would think, like, my goodness, what's the point? I was showing this video. And the reason is because that's, that's, that's not normal. You don't have folks like that in, in a situation, this type of shooting, uh, where you got Larry North, you know, wearing red and white, he's up there trying to talk to the police officers, telling them, I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to be the one to tell you what happens. And he's there shaking the officer's hand in front of him. And so we believe that, that adds to his credibility when he's there in an interview with Investigator Leffler, telling him about the individuals uh, that left out of Green Hills that night. So that's why we played that video. Because the truth of the matter is, we've done these cases enough to know that the way uh, when it comes time to come to trial, people are reluctant to testify. So when Mr. North is asked that question about who left out from Lonsdale, and he gives the name Chris Bassett, who left out uh, from Green Hills, 
Chris Bassett, Brandon Perry, Richard Williams, uh, Kipling Colbert, and Malik George. Take that. Was there anything that corroborates that statement? Well, that's when we go out and we pull the video. We look at the Green Hills video. That, that corroborates it. You, you see the two vehicles leaving out, and you see at least those five individuals. But what else corroborates? Well, Chris Bassett's statement. He admits to being in Lonsdale. He admits that Brandon Perry was in Lonsdale with him. So that corroborates Larry North's statement. What else corroborates <coughs> Larry North's statement? <coughs> Devontae Patrick. He identifies Kipling Cole. And what corroborates Larry North's statement about Richard Williams? Those two guns. It's found with the 40 caliber in January, and it's found with the 9 millimeter uh, in April. But not only that, he shoots Larry North. What's the reason? Why do you set Larry North up to be shot? That goes back to that Snapchat conversation between Larry North and Kipling Cole. You know. Larry North, he wanted to do the right thing that night. He wanted to come forward and give the information that he had. <coughs> because of that, he got shot, as he told you, through his sunglasses and cursors. Uh, he got seven to eight boys. He still talked to this. And he identified his bros, folks in his lie game, as being the individuals that left out of Green Hills that night at 9 o'clock to go to the west side, armed with guns. And the people he identified were Richard Williams, Kipling Colbert, and Chris Bassett. All of them are guilty of the premeditated first degree murder of Xavier Dawson and the attempted murder of all the other kids. We would ask that you hold them responsible and find them guilty of all the crimes for which they are charged in these indictments.